Yes, I'm Paige Osi. I'm in the Environmental Biology Program, and today I'm going to be talking about the water quality analysis we conducted on Handsome Brook. So to start, it was an observational study, and it was conducted on Handsome Brook and the number six brook, which flows into Handsome Brook, and that's what's shown there with the red. That is actually the number six brook. Um, this is located in Shenango County, and more specifically, Sherburne, New York. And throughout this stream, there is a large change in forest cover throughout it. See, starting, this is high in the watershed, and this brook is actually in a state forest. So that's the headwaters, and as you move downstream, there's more residential and agriculture. So I chose to study this because it's located around my hometown. I'm from Sherburne, and this is an area that I couldn't find like a lot of studies on, so I wanted to learn more. And I was initially interested in the impacts of land usage on the stream water quality throughout the watershed. Just a little background on stream water quality. So stream water quality is important to the ecosystem and all the organisms which live in and around the stream. Um, if there are pollutants in a stream and we don't know about them, they could become a big issue. And if the stream's water quality is polluted enough and has poor water quality, it could impact the fish communities and all, everything else living there. And then that would have economic value because fishing in these streams is very popular. And there is a picture of one of the brook trout we found in the stream. So obviously we wanted to conduct an analysis on the stream and the water quality. We did this by sampling three different areas, those being the fish, macroinvertebrates, and a chemical analysis. And we basically wanted to see if there were any significant differences among the sites from higher up in the watershed moving down through the watershed and we wanted to analyze what factors could contribute to these differences if they were present. So the first section of my methods was the macroinvertebrates, and we sampled these by using a kicksane, which is the yellow thing pictured there. So you put that into the bottom of the stream and you disrupt like the rocks and sediment in front of it, and so that collects the macroinvertebrates. And then we identify the macroinvertebrates and count them, and this can show a water quality rating. And to do that, we use the Isaac Walton League Save Our Streams protocol and the sheet they have that goes along with that. Um, the next se section is fish, and we sampled the fish using our electrofishing backpack unit we have here. And if you don't know what that is, it's a backpack, and you put it in the water and it stuns the fish, which makes them float up so we can collect them. And then we do this using a three-pass depletion method over a 10 meter area, so we just kind of go over the same area three times to get the best representation of the fish population. And here in this picture, we are measuring the fish we found, and we record the lengths and the species of each fish at each site for each of the three passes. The last section of my methods was the chemical analysis. So the parameters we sampled were DO, or dissolved oxygen, pH, chloride, nitrate, and then we also recorded the water temperature and transparency at each site. So here on the top, you can see those are the test strips we use for nitrate and pH. And this bottom one is the chloride test strip. And that is sitting on one of the Save Our Streams sheets that we used. This was also part of the chemical analysis. And these are just the test kits that were used for the dissolved oxygen and phosphate at each site. So here's a little bit more background on the sites. So each site was at a stream road crossing, and we did this for accessibility. And the first two sites way at the top were the ones that were in the state forest, as we saw on the other map. And those two are on seasonal roads, so there's no winter maintenance or anything on those roads. And then the third site is way down here, and this is on a regular road that has seasonal maintenance. And it is also on the Handsome Brook, whereas the other two were on the number six brook. And this picture is just a better representation of what each of the sites looked like. So up on the top is the road and down below is where the stream flows. And then in the background, you can kind of see some of the stuff we use, like that's the electrofishing backpack over there. And we're sampling the macro vertebrates in the front. Something else we used to learn some more about each site was the USGS StreamSats application. And this was used to analyze physical characteristics of each site and gave a lot of insight on like the stream flow statistics and spatial analysis of each site. One thing it showed us was the percentage of area covered by forest at each site. This is a picture of that from site three. The first two sites had very high 
forest cover, which we expected. So those were 99.2 and 99.6%. And then the third site, it was a little bit lower forest cover at 94.5%. And even though there wasn't a huge difference in these different sites, there was a difference in the road usage and like human traffic of each of the sites since the first two were like seasonal roads and the state lands and the third one is just a regular road. So moving on to the results, first up is the macroinvertebrates. So overall, from the first site to the second two sites, there was an increase in macroinvertebrates in each sample, which is kind of what we expected. And when we do macroinvertebrates, we really focus on the pollution sensitive macroinvertebrates for the water quality rating. And at the first site, we only found five macroinvertebrates overall over two passes of a one meter section, and none of those happen to be pollution sensitive macroinvertebrates. Therefore, the water quality rating, rating was very low at a four, which is poor water quality. The next two sites, we found more macroinvertebrates. There was a lot more at site two than site three, being 109 and 90 of those being the pollution sensitive macroinvertebrates. This gave an overall water quality rating of 19, which is good. The site three also had good water quality with a rating of 18, but we only found 24 overall and 15 of those being the pollution sensitive macros. Um, these are, include species like caddisflies, mayflies, stoneflies, and water pennies. Those were specifically the ones we found at types sites two and three. Um, here's my fish results. So this shows all the species of fish we found. Overall, there was eight different species we found among the three sites. From site one through site three, the number of fish increased overall, and as well as the species rich, richness. At the first site, we only found three different species, and at the second two, there were seven at each. So, also, so at the first site, we found 30 fish overall. The second was 82, and the third was 114. There were a couple of things that were kind of weird when we put this into the system we used on Excel. So the first thing is on site three, it was predicted that we would have found over a thousand black-nosed ace, and that's just really not biologically possible. But this happened because the number we found through each of the three passes with the electrofishing backpack were pretty much the same. It was like five, six, and six again or something like that. So that's why that was so high. And then the other ones that are noted with the B, what happened with those is there was no fish caught of that species in the first two passes with the electrofish backpack, but there was a number count on the third, so I just inserted that number there to better reflect the data. Um, lastly, the chemical analysis of each site. There wasn't anything super interesting here. It was pretty much what would be expected. The DO and the pH had a little bit of differences from different sites, but overall it was pretty much the same. Um, the phosphate, nitrate, and transparency levels were completely the same over the three sites, so there was nothing really to see there. But the one thing that was pretty interesting was the chloride levels. There was no chloride shown on the first two sites, but the third site, there was some. And this was most likely due to, to the fact that that is not a seasonal road like the other two, and it does have winter maintenance, so the salt from salting the roads gets into the water, and that can affect the chloride. Now moving on to discussion. Much of the data showed what we would have expected it to be, like there wasn't too many interesting things that we found that were unusual. And there was a general trend of the number of fish and macroinvertebrates increasing as we moved down the watershed throughout the sites. Um, if I were to do this again, there was a few things I would suggest. So first of all, we wanted to go to way more than three sites, but it just didn't work out that way. Once we got out there, things took a little longer than we expected, so we ended up only getting to three because the sun sets super early now. Um, I would also want to make sure that throughout the sites that I research again, I would make sure there's difference in land usage. So really get down into like more towards the town where there's more agriculture and more residential areas. Um, and then I have my references and that's it.